No problem, no problem. So <laughs> um, I would just briefly introduce uh, once more uh, RRI because this is where it's about uh, in your project uh, and our policy as well. Um, it, RRI has, at the, has been at the heart of our policy development since years already. Um, even though we didn't use the term, the particular term RRI uh, ourselves in the past, um, we've seen the term becoming more and more present in the last few years, uh, of course, but what it is about actually, it, it seems to have become uh, some kind of, of, of catch all term. Um, that's the first question that I, I will briefly explain uh, just after this slide. But we see at the same time that European research area um, working on, on gender knowledge transfer, open science, etc., as well as the framework programs uh, that work a lot on, on ethics, uh, open access, etc., have increasingly put uh, put attention on, on these, these principles and pushing uh, the approaches uh, of, uh, of RRI. Um, yeah, nevertheless, for us, the difficulty remains as a funding agency, well, how, how to define and on which domains should we work? So what we have done uh, is, well, we've made a definition to store it, what it is about. And we've based our, uh, our definition on uh, the results of uh, of other projects like RI practice. So for us, RI is to produce ethically acceptable, sustainable, societally desirable research innovation uh, outcomes. That's our working definition. Um, and we went searching actually for uh, frameworks uh, on RI because yeah, where do you start? Uh, what is RI? Are there sub dimensions? Uh, what are the operational outcomes? So we've, man we've managed to make a framework based on the framework that uh, has been offered by our iTools uh, project, also um, uh, funded by uh, the European Commission. And, and that permitted us to, to distinguish between different dimensions, let's say ethics and research integrity, uh, uh, open access, uh, gender equality, for instance. And we also have other categories uh, such as public engagement that uh, will be uh, discussed briefly uh, after this uh, this slide, uh, governance and uh, science uh, education. We see that each and every dimension has also sub dimensions. So ethics research integrity is about uh, integrity, the ontology, also ethics in the uh, deliberation uh, of uh, of R&D uh, projects, funding call formulation, the definition of, uh, of the calls. Uh, open access have this, has different subcategories as well. Uh, open science, uh, open access policies, um, gender equality, uh, exactly the same. Now, what we did is, well, we tried to work on each and every dimension and identify a number of uh, priority actions to put in place. Uh, on ethics, on open access, on gender equality, on public engagement governance, and as well science education. Um, I won't go into further detail on uh, each of these dimensions because that will require a presentation of two or three hours, I think, at least. Uh, but what I will do is focus uh, as, uh, as well as required here in light of this uh, webinar on public engagement. So what is public engagement uh, about in the light of resp responsible uh, research uh, and innovation? Um, well, we've identified three categories, uh, multi-stakeholder uh, engagement, uh, participatory research uh, agenda uh, setting, and community-based uh, participatory uh, research. Um, what we do uh, a lot is uh, we work a lot on uh, well public uh, deliberation. Um, we work with citizen juries uh, that help uh, to evaluate uh, projects. That will be the case that I will present just hereafter. Uh, but we also work uh, a lot uh, on uh, public participation, such as citizen science, uh, citizens that really actively uh, collaborate uh, with researchers to um, um, obtain research data. Uh, we also work on public consultations. Um, we involve public uh, uh, citizens uh, in 
uh, focus group, etc., uh, to define our regional uh, innovation uh, policies. Um, we also uh, consult uh, the stakeholders, uh, citizens included, uh, to define topics uh, for our calls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's uh, more related to research uh, agenda uh, agenda setting. We also work a lot on community-based participatory research, um, the research methods. Uh, like co-creation, where uh, there are quadruple helix kind of, of, of projects where uh, citizens uh, work to re together with scientists, with uh, public uh, uh, bond, uh, bodies, um, with economic uh, actors um, on uh, research and innovation uh, projects. Um, define uh, research questions in, in co-creation, uh, develop uh, solutions, um, whether or not in living labs, uh, so living uh, laboratories uh, where people uh, experiment with solutions offered by scientists uh, and enterprises. Um, so that's what public engagement um, for us is, uh, is about. Um, well, now let's focus a bit more on uh, one specific aspect of uh, public engagement in the light of research, uh, responsible research innovation for Innovities as a funding agency. Um, public deliberation um, is um, dealt with uh, and is applied, uh, implemented um, in uh, specifically in the light of our co-creation uh, program. Um, where uh, we have installed since uh, a few years uh, the popular jury, or you can call it the citizen uh, citizen uh, jury. Um, I will say, I will briefly introduce uh, what it is about. So it concerns uh, a participatory uh, kind uh, of, uh, of evaluation. So citizens participate in the evaluation of a research and innovation uh, project. Um, it has been done since 2019. So now we've already done two uh, editions uh, of uh, the citizen jury. So each time we launch a call of, a specific, of this specific program, co-creation, um, we organize juries uh, that evaluate the whole, uh, the, the whole number of, of projects. So we've done two uh, co-creation editions since then. So we've already uh, done two uh, citizen juries uh, as well. Um, now, what is the program uh, about? So the people, the citizens are involved in the relation of co-creation kind of research. So what is it? I already mentioned it briefly. So it's about a quadruple helix kind of, of, of uh, research uh, project. Uh, where um, different parties work together, citizens, enterprises, public bodies, uh, scientists, uh, etc. And um, the main objective of the program is um, that projects develop uh, responses uh, to urban challenges uh, on using action uh, research, uh, which means that um, the projects and the research questions are uh, demand driven and citizens are actively involved also in the public and uh, the project uh, application and implementation. Um, I will give well a brief example like imagine in, in cities there's a lot of, of, of wood waste um, such as uh, packaging material uh, in wood like pallets. I don't know if it exists in, in, in English the pallets, the wooden uh, uh, pallets that are used to, to transport uh, all kinds of goods. That's a form of wood waste. So if uh, the, some projects, uh, well, one specific project in each case has worked on how to define, uh, develop an alternative use for this wood waste in the city. Uh, and in developing these solutions, they involve citizens as well. Um, in order to um, try to make uh, new kinds of projects uh, using uh, products uh, using this uh, wood uh, wood waste, um, the citizens were involved in a, a follow-up committee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is a an example of a co-creation uh, project that is locally embedded, that is demand-driven, working on a concrete 
um, challenge uh, in the region and uh, providing innovative solutions as well that are um, socially desirable and also environmentally friendly and durable uh, by nature. Um, the project budgets uh, for this kind of projects uh, range between a few hundreds of thousands of euros up to uh, a million uh, a million of, uh, of euros, in which we fund at 100% most of the time the scientific actors and to a lesser degree, uh, to a certain percentage, uh, the other uh, actors. Now, the citizens um, that participate participate as full members uh, of the evaluation uh, jury. Um, what does that mean? That they have the same voice as the other uh, ex experts uh, that uh, are involved. Uh, why do we involve these uh, citizens, particularly in the light of this uh, specific project uh, and this specific program? Um, because we've often noticed uh, a shortage uh, of experts uh, for these kinds uh, of projects uh, that know the local context very well. And part um, of the success of this kind of project uh, is related to uh, its impact on the local, uh, local level. So if you invite uh, external experts from out that don't live in Brussels, that don't know Brussels very well, but have a lot of broad expertise on the technolo uh, technological uh, or scientific uh, level. Well, often we, we notice that they're not fully available, uh, fully um, capable uh, of um, estimating uh, what to what extent uh, the project will definitely lead to an added value on on the local uh, local scale that was the main reason why we've uh, tried to involve citizens the first time in 2019 in the citizen uh, jury so these citizens they are participants uh, in this uh, jury but they, li they all live in the city um, or they feel a strong sense uh, of uh, belonging uh, to it so to make things a bit more more clear, I just uh, I will just share with you um, a video um, where uh, some of the citizens present uh, themselves. But uh, to be sure uh, that you can hear me, uh, I could I will ask you to confirm if you have any sound uh, on the video. So I will just let it play, and could you confirm if you hear anything? So do you hear the sound or? The sound, not yet. Oh, okay. So. But it's not running yet, so perhaps. No, the sound is not working, but we, but we can. Okay, but then I will just, um put the video on play it's uh the, there are subtitles so everyone will be able to hear uh what the persons uh are are saying be able to read so i will just uh put it on play no it seems that Thank you. 
So I'm very sorry because there was no sound, but I hope you could see the video. We'll also send the, the link to the, to the participants later on. Yeah, and also can you just could, put you, it in the chat also. Yes, okay. But uh, did you were you able to see the video uh, and the subtitles? Yeah. So. Okay, so that's the most important. Just to, to show you that effectively there were real citizens involved, and these were the citizens that have been involved in the in the past. And each of uh, of the citizens has uh, has its his or her uh, story, uh, has his or her background that uh, makes uh, them have a lot of uh, of expertise that is relevant uh, to these kinds of projects, because they really know very well the city, its challenges, its difficulties. Uh, the local neighborhoods, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what it's uh, all about uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this citizen juries, to be able to um, integrate also the voice of the people that live in the city where uh, research and innovation projects uh, will be implemented and uh, will uh, affect change, hopefully. Um, one uh, important aspect um, in the light of this uh, citizen uh, jury, we just we don't invite the members just over just to participate and um, to give a score uh, without any uh, kind of, uh, of preparation. The preparation uh, of the citizens uh, is uh, key um, because many of the citizens um, refuse initially as soon as we ask them hey uh, would you be uh, prepared to participate in the evaluation of a research uh, and innovation uh, project because they don't feel uh, competent they don't feel uh, uh, capable uh, of evaluating uh, this kind of complicated uh, thing uh, and research innovation uh, project so many many refuse so what is important is to empower uh, the citizens um, and to make them understand what the project is about, what their role is about, and to what extent their expertise has a real added value um, in relation to the other kinds of expertise uh, that um, are represented uh, in the evaluation panel. Um, I was talking about other kinds of expertise. We're talking about scientific experts and also uh, the experts of, of Inoviris uh, itself that evaluate uh, the projects. Um, so we have two experts, um, external experts on a scientific technical uh, level. Um, we have two citizens and we have two uh, advisors uh, from, uh, from Inoviris. So therefore, um, we work together with a, a support center and the support center is called Confluence. That's a non-profit association that is funded directly by Innovitis, um, with, um, of course, uh, based on an action plan. And one of the main actions that they have to uh, develop is provide support uh, to, uh, on the one hand, the projects that develop the co-creation, um, uh, that develop the co-creation uh, methodologies and um, develop the innovations, but also to uh, the citizens. So they help with the recruitment uh, of citizens uh, based on the, their local networks, uh, on their local knowledge uh, of, uh, of the field. Um, and they also um, help uh, to um, educate them uh, and inform them with respect to um, what this research innovation uh, about what are the basic basic concepts uh, in the field of, of innovation and how to evaluate a research and innovation uh, program, uh, project, sorry. So that's something very important. It costs a lot of money. It's a great investment, of course, but at the same time, um, the citizens that uh, participate are very well uh, prepared and feel self-assured to play their an active role uh, legit legitimate role as well in uh, in the light of the of the jury. So um, another important aspect um, in the light of this uh, jury is that we 
of course, we don't want uh, any conflict uh, of interest. So uh, the methods uh, they use to uh, invite people uh, to the citizen juries and to select them is that, well, of course, they don't have any specific beliefs or ideology that could harm, of course, uh, the independent evaluation uh, of uh, the project, uh, etc. So they pay a lot of attention uh, to that. Um, to sorry, prepare, so sorry, yes. so we two more minutes, and we will. Yeah, we're almost uh, we're almost yeah. finished. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, each of the projects, um, well, are visited on site uh, before uh, the start of the evaluation jury. Um, so the, the members, the citizens, go on the terrain, on the field with the project. Uh, leaders and each one is each of the persons that is involved in the project to visit what is the project actually doing and uh, what is the uh, what are the research questions and what will they do concretely in in the light of this uh, this project on the terrain and then there's 20 minutes of minutes of presentation and then 20 minutes of discussion and evaluation by the uh, members so each citizen's course uh, just like the other experts um, and each decision is based on a consensus, of course, by the panel, uh, panel members. In terms of indemnity, the indemnity is the same for all experts. Uh, each of them has the same voice and receives the same uh, amount of, uh, of financial uh, contribution. Yeah. Um, also important is we talk about citizen juries, but normally but here we talk about popular jury because popular is much more uh, empowerment uh, by nature if you use a popular as a word uh, with respect to citizen citizen more or less uh, implies a rather passive uh, kind of interpretation of uh, individuals uh, in society and popular is more uh, well more much more reflects an empowerment uh, point of view now just to briefly recap, uh, for us, uh, this added value of uh, uh, public engagement evaluation, uh, public participatory evaluation for Inovidis is the citizens, they know the Brussels territory very well. Uh, the people that evaluate are much, are very much concerned by the results of the project. They uh, perceive the position of the co-researchers uh, in uh, the uh, evaluated uh, uh, projects and they bring other dimensions into the discussion like intuitions, uh, feelings, etc. So they visit the project before jury so they have a real a good view on what the, the concrete context uh, is, uh, is about in their neighborhood and they focus on the potential of the project etc. And they question also well, the, the framework pro, uh, uh, of uh, the program itself which is a good feedback for us. The feelings of the citizens are often very proud. Uh, they appreciate the richness of a change um, and it brings hope uh, to them uh, with respect to trust uh, in science, uh, science in society. Um, and they feel um, often a sense of, of, of democracy as well. And for the project, the added value is they've been citizens participate in the project. So it's logical that also citizens are involved in the evaluation. Um, it's another way to present uh, the projects because citizens uh, visit uh, their projects. So it's very much appreciated by the researchers themselves that people are really, uh, really uh, involved in the in the project's um, evaluation. And yeah, yeah okay. that's more or less uh, it. So if there will, if there yeah, are any further questions, yeah, okay. okay. So Thank you very much, Cedric, for your presentation and show you, showing us how Innoiris is dealing with public engagement. As we have been seeing, it's really, you know, you are working with public engagement from different perspectives and in a very diverse way, and also for sharing us this, sharing with us this public deliberation activities or popular jury, as you have said. And our second spe speaker is Rosa Arias, who I've had the pleasure of knowing her for a few years now. She is CEO and founder of Science for Change, located in Spain. She is chemical engineer by training, 
and she has over 15 years of experience as an expert on research and odors. And she has been working in different European research projects related to citizen science, science communication. She coordinates some of them. She, is adv she advises initiative science in parliament, which seeks to create a science office to inform the Spanish parliament. And she's also a member of the European Citizen Science Associ Associations. As you will see, she's involved in many initiatives to bring science closer to society and to inform public policies. And she is assessing now several regional and local government in these issues. So thank you very much, Rosa, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Aida. Um, I will share my screen as well. And uh, yes, as you mentioned, we are involved in a lot of projects, but I try to bring you some specific examples uh, to show the value of inclu including public participation in research to inform uh, policies. So I hope that uh, this is uh, of your interest. Uh, let me explain, uh, start by explaining who we are. Uh, we are a startup that was born, in fact, to exploit the results of one of the European projects where I'm involved, uh, the Dinosis project. Project is one about others that you mentioned. And in fact, what we want to do is to involve citizens in science to improve society, as simple as that. Uh, so how we do that? We use uh, citizen science, community engagement, co-creation, and a an user-centered bottom-up approach uh, to produce highly inclusive, highly adaptable, highly replicable methodologies, uh, also aligned uh, with all the RRI dimensions um, that we use uh, to produce new data sets, uh, to produce social innovations uh, to tackle social environmental challenges and finally uh, improve policies. And this is what I, I will try to, to explain today with some examples. For us, uh, and as uh, Cedric was explaining, it is really important to work with the quadruple, quadruple helix engagement model. And this is what we try to do in all our activities uh, in order to uh, work interdisciplinary, um, uh, to have the knowledge uh, of all the actors involved uh, to produce uh, synergies, promote dialogues, work from the bottom up to tackle these challenges that are uh, aligned uh, with uh, society, uh, and working from local to global to produce responsible and more competitive innovations. This is our team. We work uh, transdisciplinarily in-house. I'm an engineer, but uh, we have sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, policy officers, etc., uh, so that this can be implemented. And I will very briefly explain you before uh, we move into the real examples, uh, how citizen science uh, is a tool to advance science uh, aligned with society uh, that can help implementing all the RRI dimension and can inform public policies. Uh, basically, citizen science has uh, it's, goes one step beyond public engagement because it has the potential to generate valid data to advance us on any type of, of challenge. Uh, it is true that it's not easy to, to do citizen science. It's time consuming. It's resource intensive to generate the communities producing this data. And there are some challenges as, uh, such as the need for common data infrastructures, but uh, it has a lot of uh, benefits that I will explain in a minute. Uh, about implementation, you can decide on how to engage the citizens, which is the level of engagement that you want. You can just um, use let's say uh, citizens as sensor or volunteer computing, this would be the lower level of participation and you can go up the ladder until the extreme citizen science model, which aims to involve any type of citizens from any academic level, any gender, any socio-cultural or socio-economic reality uh, in all the phases, the stages uh, of the uh, research project. From the very definition of the research question, you co-design the question with the involved citizens, the affected communities, uh, to the data collection, the data analysis, and future actions. Um, so you can choose, but uh, this could be the deeper form of citizen participation in science. And as I was mentioning before, it allows to apply all the RRI dimensions because you can introduce in your research, of course, public engagement is there, but also science education since citizens are learning while they are participating. You can introduce the gender dimension in your research or you, of course, uh, work open access uh, and open data because the data belong to the citizens that are generating it. Uh, 
uh, of course, you need to take into account the ethics aspects. And uh, of course, you can inform public policies and advance on the governance aspects. So we are proposing not only doing science with and for society, but a responsible policies with and for society. And to move from these uh, top-down approaches to bottom-up approaches to boost uh, behavioral changes and social innovations. And these are the benefits in a nutshell. Uh, we can generate new data, we can inform uh, public policies and regulations, we can mobilize also behavioral changes, and we can encourage transparency and confidence and improve the relationships between the, all the actors involved. And a very important uh, thing that Cedric also mentioned in his presentation is that citizens have the local knowledge of the issue that they, they want uh, to tackle or that they uh, can contribute uh, to tackle. And this is something that we cannot grasp from the scientists or from the public administration's point of view. And uh, of course, we can address any type of challenge, which is another advantage, uh, environmental, uh, social sciences, or health issues uh, can be tackled uh, through citizen science. And uh, you know that the commission is uh, giving a lot of support to citizen science in the last years. Um, there was a, a lot of work going on uh, together with the JRC uh, through the citizen science cost action, also through the EU citizen science project, through the EXA working group, groups, etc., that at the end uh, produce different documents, such as this, the ones that you see uh, on the screen, um, for example, this report on citizen science and environmental monitoring, or best practices in citizen science for environmental monitoring, which is a commission staff working document, and recommends how uh, these practices can inform uh, public policies. And uh, here, in these documents, you will find this type of, of uh, suggestions that uh, citizen science can work in the interface of science policies and citizens and also inform all the, the phases of the policy cycle, from the problem definition to policy formulation, policy adoption, policy implementation, and policy evaluation, as we just uh, saw uh, in, in Cedric's presentation. And uh, of course, this brings policy value, but also scientific value and societal value. And finally, uh, we can also contribute to inform the SDGs. If you are more interested in this uh, aspect, uh, I recommend you to, to read these two papers here. Uh, the first one uh, was analyzing and concluding that there are no traditional data sources yet sufficient to measure and monitor the SDGs. And citizen science is an example of a non-traditional data source that is already contributing. And the second paper uh, analyzes all the indicators in relation to the SDGs. Uh, uh, that can be uh, need to be monitored and the gaps uh, to, to monitor those indicators and uh, the potential uh, of citizen science to inform them and contribute to the monitoring of up to 33 percent of the indicators. So let's move after this introduction to the real examples. Uh, and I want to uh, basically, I chosen one of our projects, uh, which is uh, Transform, because we are really working in the interface of science and policies with a lot of actors uh, to inform uh, the S3, the Smart Specialization Strategy of the region, and also to inform public policies. And in fact, uh, in this project, Innovidis is one of the project partners, because we are also working in the uh, Brussels capital uh, region. So I will explain you very briefly our experience here and how we are informing project uh, policies, uh, for, in this case, from the local level to the regional level. Uh, we are 13 partners from five countries, and uh, we are working in the Lombardy region, in Brussels capital region, and in Catalonia uh, to transform uh, research and innovation projects from the triple to the quadruple helix uh, through public engagement, and in our case, uh, through citizen science. And uh, to do that, in fact, uh, the first uh, thing that we did in Catalonia, uh, where we are focused on citizen science, was to create uh, the Catalan cluster, the Catalan think tank, um, that, as we called it, uh, where we involve a lot of actors from uh, the research and innovation uh, Catalan system that I will show you in a minute. And the objectives uh, were to explore uh, the potential of citizen science uh, when designing and applying public policies in order to be more efficient in answer soci societal needs, uh, to improve transitions management towards a more inclusive and su sustainable ways, to build better public 
public policies, overcoming these blind aspects of the actions and current solutions to better inform policy decisions, and to involve, of course, citizens in the co-design of public policies and public services, improving its accountability and performance. Uh, to do that, uh, we contributed uh, uh, to this framework, uh, which is called uh, Shared Agendas for Collaborative Research, which has been proposed and it's been applied uh, by the Catalan government, the Generalitat de Catalunya, in the last years. And it uh, consists basically in these three steps that you see on the screen. The first one is then when you have a, a challenge, first you need to understand this challenge and prepare the basis for collective action. Collective action. Here we are already talking about involving uh, different typologies of stakeholders. Uh, to do that, you need to create this group, this uh, stakeholder group, uh, define a shared vision of the challenge and the future vision where you want to arrive. This requires uh, aligning agendas, aligning uh, priorities, uh, aligning timings as well. And uh, then you can create a plan uh, for action. Then you move to the co-design phase. And here you can involve uh, your citizens, for example, you can involve them in the previous uh, phase if you want to find uh, co-design and test these new solutions to the problem that you have identified previously and, uh, and define uh, the plan of action. To finally, uh, once, uh, once, once you have the results, you can reproduce and scale up the solutions that you tested in the more local level. And this is uh, the second phase uh, that you see here. This is what we tested in the transform pilots. And I will show you the results that we are obtaining at the local levels and how they can be scaled up uh, at the regional level in this case. So this is the, the think tank. Uh, as you see, we have a lot of actors from uh, local city councils, key decision makers, such as the Generalitat, different departments. Agaur is also there. Uh, the School of Public Administration in Catalonia, the Waste Agency uh, of Catalonia, for example, a lot of universities and research centers, also representatives from the private sector and innovation labs. Uh, so with all these actors, what we did uh, last year, in fact, uh, was a series of, of four participatory webinars uh, based on RRI, uh, public engagement and participatory research. And the first two uh, were in fact more capacity building oriented. Uh, so we wanted uh, for all these actors in the research and innovation Catalan system to understand what RRI was, uh, what citizen science was, what are the advantages, disadvantages, etc. And also to identify the challenges, the gaps, uh, the, the need, uh, things that need to be changed uh, to, for this to be able to happen and then we run uh, two practical exercise to start uh, co-designing um, uh, some citizen science projects that could be applied to these challenges based on real challenges in fact and uh, the results of these two uh, uh, this series of webinars were first identifying these challenges of collaborative research and second the definition of the transformed pilots uh, but from uh, a real challenge perspective and from the owners of the challenge, uh, as I will explain in a second. And very, very briefly, as uh, the results uh, that we found uh, in terms of roles and challenges, is that, of course, as you know, and this is the, the topic of the webinar, uh, the role of the funders uh, have the, the key you know, to, to fund projects and include public engagement, for example, RRI and citizen science uh, in the research and innovation ecosystem by, for example, select, uh, adding selection criteria in public calls and tenders or uh, promoting funding uh, to to address these areas. Uh, they can also close the cycle by integrating citizen generated data, for example, or results uh, from public participatory process um, into policy making uh, to achieve these real impacts that we are discussing. And they can also facilitate uh, common spaces for exchange uh, and uh, for scientists to talk with policymakers, which was one of the requests from the scientific community. On the other side, the scientific community needs this institution changes, which I think is one of the uh, things that you work in uh, during GRACE, uh, to promote this public participation in research because there is no recognition for scientists uh, usually when they do that. Also, trust uh, in citizen-generated data needs to be promoted uh, to integrate this data in the policy cycle. Uh, knowledge transfer is essential and also new skills are needed to connect, uh, to connect science and policy. 
and about the pilots, I will explain you very briefly what we did. The first one, you see that the, they were very different pilots. The first one is uh, waste management. We involve one local city council, uh, which is the Ayuntamiento de Mollet del Valles, a small uh, um, uh, municipality in Catalonia uh, to in the co-design process of an uh, to improve the selective collection of waste in the in the municipality was the, this was the main um, the main target and it this was aligned with several policies and strategies that they, they were trying to implement first uh, one was the PEC projects which are inside the smart specialization strategy of the region uh, the shared agenda that I showed you earlier uh, together with the whole uh, region the small region there. Uh, and also a new tender, public tender on waste management uh, that uh, was out and uh, that included citizen participation in the co-design of these innovative uh, participation systems. So these were uh, the, the stakeholders involved. And uh, well, these were the goals, raising awareness, creating breaking barriers, and also co-designing these new um, um, innovative uh, collection systems, waste collection system, different phases, I will not go on. We didn't finish the pilot, so the results are uh, partial yet, but we already have some results at, at the policy level uh, that I will explain you. This is uh, the words from the people uh, in the City Council of Mollet del Valles uh, participating in the pilot. They saw that data show uh, that a change in the system was needed because it was uh, totally blocked from uh, several years now, uh, that it was vital to work with the quadruple helix to introduce this new perspectives, uh, that territorial debates allow also to bring research to the territory and incorporate citizens in this research. This boosts, uh, boosts a change of perspective, uh, since the solution can come from the bottom up. And uh, also a change of internal culture in the city council, because, for example, the environmental and the participation department have never worked together. Uh, also, public in, in administration is challenged and asked uh, to be more open and make informed decisions. Uh, uh, it's a radical change uh, in how citizens can participate uh, in decision making and uh, it's also important uh, to use common languages, for example, or align agendas. This is what we found in the waste uh, pilot and we have a second pilot on health. This is totally different. Yes, I, I'm finishing. <laughs> Uh, this is totally different, um, and we are dealing with endometriosis, which is a, an illness uh, from, that we suffer, the women, um, that is not uh, very well um, recognized or treated until now. So what we wanted to, to do is to gather experience, personal experiences from the women to understand uh, the symptoms and uh, make the diagnosis early than the eight uh, years in average that is uh, happening now. Uh, also, we wanted to collect the opinions on it uh, of this uh, patient journey that uh, they, they did and also produce uh, policy recommendations. Uh, so we have a total of 24 women involved uh, to collect this patient journeys. And you see here an example, I will not go into the details, then we were deepening in several aspects such as fertility issues, social or work issues, psychological issues as well. And at the end, uh, the recommendations are based on these patients reported experience measurements. So this will never happen if the patients have not been involved. And basically, the conclusions are that uh, women and gynecologists from the hospital, uh, the San Pao, are enthusiastic. They are willing to change, make a lot of internal changes uh, based on these prems uh, to produce new models of attention and treatments. Uh, so they will produce a new endometriosis protocol, and this will be transferred to the whole health Catalan system, which is a very uh, good advice. And um, well. I will stop here. Uh, I just wanted to mention one of the challenges uh, that we discovered in other projects, uh, which is also the difficulties to communicate uh, between uh, science and, and policies. But these are uh, my conclusions. Uh, basically, uh, citizen science can produce this new data to advance on societal needs aligned with society. Uh, this is the deeper form of public engagement. It allows to embed all the RRI dimensions. It can impact uh, policies at any level. Uh, it has some challenges, but a lot of advantages and funders uh, can experience firsthand the innovation potential of public engagement in research and have the key to promote uh, these practices through public funders, tenders and calls. So I thought uh, that I hope that this encourages you and many thanks. That's all, Aida.
Thank you very much, Rosa, for bringing us insights from public engagement, how it works, and also showing us the transport project and how to involve you know, the public deeply in local participation and co-creation. So after hearing each other's presentation, perhaps you have one main point that you would like to highlight, but perhaps we can go directly because we don't have so much time left. So if you have any, if the, you have any question to the speakers or any comment, please, uh, you are more than welcome to write it down in the chat. So for the speakers, if you want to mention to highlight any, 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 you know, any, any comment or any suggestion that the other speaker have already said. Or perhaps I also have a lot of questions uh, um, listening to you. One of them, both of you have talked about RRI and public engagement. And one of the main you know, challenges that we are facing many funding organizations is when they're dealing with, with public engagement, we should, we should approach public engagement in connection with the, these other social aspects of research with the other RI uh, dimensions, or should we do it as a separate aspect? What do you think is the best way to approach public engagement together with the other RI uh, dimensions or just uh, individually? Uh, do you want me to answer, Aida? Yeah. Oh, okay. From my point of view, it's um, it's of course up to you, and uh, you you know you you have a, a wide range uh, to incorporate all the dimensions. But at least the ethics dimensions should be there. For me, the gender dimension is also very very important uh, when we talk about public participation. If we don't want to leave uh, you know half of the world behind, let's say. Uh, but the other dimensions, of course, for example, governance can be easily incorporated if you want to make this uh, link no, with not only public participation, but this connection with policies. So at the end, if you start, you can include them all. But uh, I, for me, the most important would be ethics and, and gender and the connection with policies. Okay. And Cedric, do you have any comment on that? Or? Oh, well, yeah, I find it very, very difficult to, uh, to, well, to make a distinguishment between what is uh -huh. most important Less because I, I from to me all, all of them are equally uh, important, and you have to work on on each and every uh, of the of the dimension, and all of the dimensions of course are uh, intertwined. Uh, so if you work on public engagement, there's always a gender dimension and a diversity dimension involved. Uh, also uh, ethics uh, in the selection of uh, of the people you will engage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this distinguishments are quite artificial. Uh, we need them to provide some basic framework to be able to develop different policy um, lines. Uh, but in real in real life and in practice, all these dimensions are intertwined. And, and that's how we try to implement uh, our policies uh, by thinking not only in, in silos, but also thinking about how to integrate all of the principles in uh, the design of a new policy, a new program, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, yeah. so thank you very much. We have two questions: one to Rosa, and another one for Frederick. The first one to Rosa: How do you implement all gender categories, not just not just women, in endometriosis, endometriosis research? Well, in this case, it's a biological uh, problem, so you need to have uh, a women with ovaries, let's say, suffering the, the, the project. But we started, in fact, with a very small group uh, that was growing little by little. Uh, this is a very, very tiny pilot. In fact, uh, it was not foreseen in Transform. We only needed to do one. But because we found it uh, so interesting and so necessary, we decided to duplicate efforts. So the extent is limited, but uh, we plan to Find, find more funding, hopefully, uh, to increment it and then include this, this type of aspects that uh, she was mentioning. Yes, uh, not yet, but I hope that, that it, it will uh, come uh, soon. Um, I'm checking the chat yeah, from yeah. Medium. Okay. And then for Cedric, what are the tools, mechanisms of involving citizens into citizen jury? How do you assure to involve diverse citizens, also the marginalized ones that sometimes don't have access to public life? Yeah, very good question, very relevant yeah. question. Yeah, and, and the main one of the main questions we deal with, uh, and also the, the the evaluation of how it 
does it work and how should we make it better the jury um, we decided to uh, apply, implement a very qualitative uh, method, uh, snowballing, uh, um, building on the expertise of the, the support center itself that is very well embedded in the local networks of uh, NGOs on uh, all kinds of nonprofit organizations that work with uh, all kinds of social groups, cultural groups, but also uh, socioeconomic uh, groups. And in that way, we try uh, to deal with uh, all the, the, the aspects uh, that are mentioned. We, from practice, we see uh, that there's no discrimination with respect to education level, etc., and that diversity is represented as well in the panels. But of course, me as well, as is from my scientific background, of course, I'm trying to uh, achieve uh, the representativeness with respect to the general population. And maybe you should implement a segmented approach uh, more qualitative and this and that and we should work with uh, um, a sample maybe and this and that. but now at this very small scale we work with a qualitative uh, method uh, that is based on the uh, expertise and the local knowledge uh, of the people uh, in the neighborhoods yeah okay so thank you but, we do, we do, we are aware uh, of the fact that there will be certain kind of groups that we won't reach. Um, yeah. Okay, so thank you, Matt. And of course, as you said, it's a key issue in all these participatory, you know, uh, processes, you know, how to involve all the different agents into the research and innovation. It's a key, a very, very key issue. It's relevant. I don't know if there is any other question and we're going to comment something. If not, I would like also to just something that in our, you know, internal process of introducing, you know, public engagement in our funding uh, uh, programs we have been thinking about. I mean, we was in some in some way we, we can say the public engagement. We work in three different dimensions. We are dealing with public engagement. One of them is into the, in the introducing, you know, these practices in the funding programs as an activity as part of the methodology that is being developed by, the, by Horizons, Horizon Europe. Another one is public engagement calls them by themselves, you know, that the main goal is to do public engagement. And the third one is how to involve, you know, these key stakeholders in the definition of the R&D funding programs themselves. So both two of them are external and one of them are more in internal. The internal one, both of you have explained it, uh, show us how to, 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 to deal with it. But that with the external one, it's how to evaluate that. I mean, is the system really measured to evaluate all these practices? Because mainly we are quite fo focused in these impact you know, factors and all that. So it's how to evaluate public engagement practices if we are introducing them in our funding goals, in our programs. And perhaps, Cedric, you have any, you know, any experience or you are dealing with it in your institution or any comment? Uh, could you uh, briefly explain the last part? So, impact measurements, uh, specifically in the in the light of public engagement practices. If you include public engagement practices in our funding goals, you no, know, as an activity that the researchers should do, you know, while doing their research, how we could, uh, if it's possible, uh, how we could evaluate them. Yeah, that's because yeah. we don't know if the, if the system is sufficient. Uh, yeah, it's a very, yeah, very good question. Mm -hmm. Something that we um, are doing. If we include them, how we're going to evaluate them? Well, the, the, the main question is do you evaluate the, the weight or the extent to which uh, they have in, well involved the citizens and applied the right methodologies? Or do you measure the outcomes of the methodologies that have been uh, applied? And what we do is we measure the outcomes because we have a whole evaluation framework uh, mm -hmm. that basis is based on environmental impact, social impact, etc. cetera. Uh, social impact, uh, one of the sub dimensions is of, of course the impact on global neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in an indirect measure, uh, manner, we measure. Uh, we measure it, but not in a direct manner um evaluating the methodologies that are used as such okay. 
Well, that's quite interesting to know how did you measure the methodology and then the you know the output no of that no of that of the project. Okay, I don't know if uh, mm -hmm. Rosa has anything to add from your experience. You are not a funding organization at all, but perhaps from no. outside. Yes, but for example, in Transform, in the endometriosis pilot, uh, through the participation of Aquas, which is the mm -hmm. agency of uh, quality and evaluation in health in Catalonia, we will be evaluating the, the results. Of, of course, the extent is limited, but uh, of, uh, hopefully we will uh, uh, do it. But uh, for me, the most important thing is to define um, useful indicators that can be actually mm -hmm. measured at all levels uh, because um, uh, for example uh, in New Zealand the, the second project that I was explaining to you we develop an impact evaluation framework uh, to try to understand we have their different labs uh, one of them is the policy lab so uh, for us the hypothesis is that if you uh, do all this public engagement or citizen science or whatever you do at the end um, and, uh, you communicate better in engage more stakeholders, et cetera, at the end, you increase the impact of your own project. This could apply the same, uh, for example, to funders or uh, also calls or, you know, at the end, um, it's, uh, it's something that you need to validate. And we are building a framework in three levels. And uh, the first level is on improving the communication uh, of the of the projects to reach policymakers, for example, to inform policies and have a, a bigger impact. Second level is also on the RRI dimensions, because if they want to incorporate uh, this, they will be evaluating, for example, how they well they do public engagement, or ethics or open access, et cetera, but trying to produce um, measurable indicators. And the third level could be this um, uh, citizen science uh, impact that you can have at the social level, environmental level, policy level, or you know the, the final impact of the, of the projects. So for me, the most important thing is to, to have different batteries of indicators for the different levels, but are actually practical and measurable, not theoretical, that are not useful. Thank you very much. We are looking forward for this framework of evaluation. We'll, really, we'll look at it really careful. So thank you much for everybody. We have arrived to the end of this session. Thank you very much to the speakers for sharing your knowledge and experience with all of us. And it has been a real pleasure to have you here today. Also, thank you very much to the audience for your presence. And I hope that the webinar has been of interest of all of you. As you know, this event is part of a series of webinars organized by the Greece Project running until December and featuring some exciting speakers. We have shared a link in the chat, we're going to share it now, where you can find out more about upcoming topics and, and register to them. The next webinar will be tackle different approaches to RRI evaluation. In this webinar, uh, the opportunities and challenges in developing indicators for RRI will be tackled, as well as different approaches to evaluate RRI initiatives from different EU projects will be presented. So thank you very much to Cedric, to, to, to Rosa, to everybody, and have a nice afternoon. Thank you, Aida. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you very much, Cedric and Rosa. Have a nice afternoon. Uh, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.